Hello and welcome back. So today I just want to do run through a new axe that I've just been trialing out in the woods today. Um, it was actually one that was sent to me by Ben Scott um, a few weeks ago. And I'd actually been um, considering getting a Kent pattern when he sent me this one. So it's really interesting axe and it was fun to try it out and I just want to give my feedback now. So stick around and we'll have a discussion about what I think about the axe and how it came to be. So when Ben sent me this axe, he was, um, you know, he tends to use bigger axes. He does timber sports and the smallest axe he tends to use really are the boys axe size. Um, that's where I got my recommendation for my Rinaldi axe that I did a video on. And, you know, that's certainly the sort of size that he tends to use. Um, but he obviously had a bit of a play with this one and, you know, he made a new handle for it. I made the cover recently, but he made this handle from scratch and it's what he considers to be a good alternative to the Swedish um, small forest axe, which is obviously, well, probably the most famous axe in bushcraft, maybe, um, but certainly the most well-known, very popular axe. Um, this is, however, quite an expensive axe now. It's, it's gone up in price a lot. And so this was Ben's take on an equivalent axe uh, for a lot cheaper. And um, also it has some differences, which I'll run through now. So it's got a very different blade type and shape. So those of you who know about Ken patterns will know, um, but you can see it looks very different to your typical Swedish style. Um, it's quite a lot lighter, even though you can see that the edge length is longer on the Kent pattern. So actually I forgot to mention, this is called the Kent pattern. Um, I don't think it's specific to any one company, but it was quite a common pattern um, throughout Britain at some point in time. Um, this particular one was made by Staniforths and it's called a Severquick and I think they had a Severquick line of garden tools like scythes and um, sickles but also hatchets and um, it's got quite a narrow bit so it's sharp it's good for limbing pruning and Ben was saying also in one of his videos good for hedge laying and you can definitely see how it would work well for that. Um, it's got a smaller pole than this one and that's where a lot of the weight reduction goes because even though it's got a broader cutting edge quite significantly it's actually an extra inch i think this was four inch and that's three inch it's actually quite a lot lighter the two axes together as they are like this this one is actually 200 over 200 grams lighter than the small forest axe so same length handle um, the longer cutting edge and a, very, a much thinner handle. So another thing, obviously, because Ben made the handle, you know, he very much favors thin handles and for a reason, they're so comfortable. This thing, it was just a delight to use today. So I was doing some clearing of some spruce, overgrown spruce. I felled a small willow for this uh, spoon blank, I did a bit of carving on the spoon blank and okay, for the carving, this handle was a little bit long, was catching a bit, but it's such a nice thin handle and it really is just a delight to use. Um, it's put a nice little curve in the, in the back here. So it actually rests, um, the center of the blade is actually touching the surface and it's in line with the plane there. It goes right in the center. If you have your hand, hand there, it's actually clear of any obstruction. So very well thought out, very well, nicely made handle. Funny enough, I was, when I was showing this to one of my sons, he said it looks like quite a primitive design. And um, although not primitive, it's certainly been around for a long time. I think according, according, and I'll recommend one of Ben's videos and I'll put a link in, my, uh, in the description uh, where he goes through some of the patterns and the origins of the European style axes. And you know he was saying this there's they go back to the 1600s this particular design so it's a you know an old style and you know according to his video some of the reasons in you know particularly in britain all the trees have been felled um, by the middle ages the large trees so they didn't have a need for very heavy axes they were m mostly doing you know small work and this would have been an axe that would be in use by you know everyday man um, for you know all the various domestic chores I guess and um, laboring tasks 
Another reason, you know, he was saying that they might have had a thinner pole was because of steel shortages. So you'd get by with the bare minimum that you'd need. So they've gone for a very thin bit, uh, a decent cutting edge, and they didn't need a lot of weight because they weren't dealing with big trees. So um, that's the style. Um, another thing actually that Ben mentioned, and I really enjoyed watching his video on um, axe geometry, is that if you notice um, through the pole to the center, there's quite a lot of bits above and below. So it's actually centered very well through the pole. Um, so there's there's no sort of adverse leverage on the bottom corner, which you get with other styles of axes. Um, so, you know, very interesting and well thought out design. And I'm surprised they don't actually make them really much anymore. I don't, I don't know of anyone who actually makes new ones. I could be wrong. Um, so mostly these are picked up at car boots or on eBay. Um, I believe, well, this, this Severquick hasn't been made for, well, I think the company went out of business in the 80s. Um, but it's probably earlier than that anyway. So I suspect Ben got it on um, eBay or something like that. So, but he, the information I had from Ben was that he actually spent 10 pounds setting it up as it is, which is quite incredible when you think that this one now is going for well over a hundred. Um, so the question is, does it perform as well as this one? Personally, I think it was actually performing quite incredibly well. So for most of the tasks you do with this ax, this one was easily as good, if not slightly better with the thinner handle, which obviously is correctable on this one. But the lighter head, it was, it's just such a, as I said, delight to use. It feels so nice in your hand. Um, and that extra lightness when you're using single handed tasks like the carving, um, a lot of the clearing of the brush, I was just using one hand and clearing through. Um, and you know, you, that lightness over time a heavier axe will start, you know, you'll start feeling it in your wrist um, and your arm. So all in all, very nice axe and uh, I'm ex extremely grateful to Ben for sending me this to try out and uh, I had a lot of fun with it. So it's definitely going to be a staple, I think, in my kit. Um, very, and as I say, the, you know, the lightness and the size, easily packable in your rucksack. I brought it in a, inside a, uh, a small rucksack today and, you know, was no bother at all. It's light fitted in inside so it can be quite unobtrusive when you walk into the forest so once again you know ben thanks very much really appreciate it if you watch this then you know um, i really do appreciate it and um hopefully that was of interest to some of you out there and if it was then um, like, like and subscribe thanks very much